The Lord be with you. Greetings from St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Junction City, Wisconsin. I'm Pastor Timothy Roser, and on this Ash Wednesday, as we begin the season of Lent, we follow the order of Vespers. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ, Lamb of our salvation. Our psalm is Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you only, have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you may be justified in your words and blameless in your judgment. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, you delight in truth in the inward being, and you teach me wisdom in the secret heart. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have broken rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners will return to you. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God, O God of my salvation and my tongue will sing aloud of your righteousness. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. For you will not delight in sacrifice, or I would give it. You will not be pleased with a burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. Do good to Zion in your good pleasure. Build up the walls of Jerusalem. Then will you delight in right sacrifices, in burnt offerings, and whole burnt offerings. Then bulls will be offered on your altar. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our office hymn is number 607 in Lutheran service book, From Depths of Woe, I Cry to Thee. From depths of woe I cry to thee in trial and tribulation. Bend down thy gracious ear to me, Lord, hear my supplication. If thou rememberest every sin, who then could heaven ever win? or stand before thy presence. Thy love and grace alone avail to blot out my transgression. The best and holiest deeds must fail to break sin's dread oppression. Before thee none can boasting stand but all must fear thy strict demand and live alone by mercy. Therefore my hope is in the Lord and not in mine own merit. It rests upon his faithful word to them of contrite spirit that he is merciful and just. This is my comfort and my trust. His help I wait with patience. And though it tarry through the night until the morning waken, my heart shall never doubt his might nor count itself forsaken. Oh, his 
Israel, trust in God your Lord, born of the Spirit and the Word. Now wait for his appearing. Though great our sins, yet greater still is God's abundant favor. His hand of mercy never will abandon us nor waver. Our shepherd, good and true, who is he? Who will at last is Israel free from all their sin and sorrows? <clears throat> the Old Testament reading for Ash Wednesday is from the book of the prophet Joel, chapter 2. Yet even now, declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. And rend your hearts and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and he relents over disaster. Who knows whether he will not return and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, consecrate a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, consecrate the congregation, assemble the elders, Gather the children, even nursing infants. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her chamber. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep and say, Spare your people, O Lord, and make not your heritage a reproach, a byword among the nations. Why should they say among the peoples, Where is their God? Then the Lord became jealous for his land and had pity on his people. The Lord answered and said to his people, Behold, I am sending to you grain, wine, and oil, and you will be satisfied, and I will no more make you a reproach among the nations. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from 2 Corinthians chapters 5 and 6. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Working together with him then, we appeal to you not to receive the grace of God in vain. For he says, in a favorable time I listened to you, and in a day of salvation I have helped you. Behold, now is the favorable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. We put no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But, as servants of God, we commend ourselves in every way, by great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, the Holy Spirit, genuine love, by truthful speech and the power of God, with weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, through honor and dishonor, through slander and praise. We are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet well-known, as dying and behold we live, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing yet possessing everything. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the sixth chapter. Jesus said, Beware of practicing your righteousness before other people in order to be seen by them, for then you will have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. Thus, when you give to the needy, sound no trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may be praised by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret, and your Father, who sees in secret, will reward you. And when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners that they may be seen by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. 
And when you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces that their fasting may be seen by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, that your fasting may not be seen by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. Deliver me, O Lord, my God, for you are the God of my salvation. Rescue me from my enemies. Protect me from those who rise against me. In you, O Lord, do I put my trust. Leave me not, O Lord, my God. Rescue me from my enemies. Protect me from those who rise against me. Deliver me, O Lord, my God. For you are the God of my salvation. Rescue me from my enemies. Protect me from those who rise against me. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. In the Gospel according to St. Matthew, Jesus said, Beware of practicing your righteousness before other people in order to be seen by them. For then you will have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. And when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites. For they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners that they may be seen by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And in the Gospel according to St. Luke, the evangelist tells us, now Jesus was praying in a certain pl place, and when he finished, one of the, his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John taught his disciples. Confronted by God's law, we see ourselves as God sees us, sinners deserving condemnation and death. Driven by the threat of earthly and eternal punishment to confess our sins, we fall down before God, and in sorrowful repentance we beg his mercy. We do not do so because of our merits, merits or worthiness, for in no way do we deserve to be forgiven. We beg God's mercy because he offers it to us, crediting us the merits of Jesus Christ, who has graciously paid the penalty of our sins for us by his death on the cross, and who has promised us new life by his resurrection from the dead. This mercy we receive by faith, a faith created in us by the power of the Holy Spirit, who calls us by the gospel to faith in this Jesus Christ. Jesus, in turn, introduces us to his heavenly Father, who adopts us into his family. He makes us Christians, his children who are privileged to know and confess God as our Father. It's been said that the first breath of a Christian is prayer. For God has spoken to us, and we would speak to him. As children of God, we want to know how to do that. What to say. What is pleasing and permissible to ask of him. Therefore, during this Lenten season, along with the disciples of Jesus, we will ask, Lord, teach us to pray. To start with, let's be clear. What is this thing called prayer? Prayer is not some form of mystical meditation whereby we empty our minds and wait for some spiritual force to fill it or some voice to whisper messages to us. Nor is prayer a magical incantation in which the right words will summon supernatural powers that we can manipulate or command. Prayer is also not a holy wishing well or a divine vending machine where we put in the proper type of spiritual coin and request a, and, and pop, out pops the answer we want. Our explanations to Luther's small catechism have defined prayer quite simply and directly. Prayer is speaking to God in words and thoughts. 
please note that's speaking to God, not with God. Prayer is not a two-way conversation. God speaks to us in his word. We speak to God in our prayers. God expects us to pray. Why? Well, first of all, because prayer isn't optional. He has commanded us to pray. As the scripture says in Psalm 105, O give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the peoples. And again in Psalm 50, call upon me in the day of trouble, I will deliver you and you shall glorify me. And as Paul wrote in 1 Thessalonians 5, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. And again in 1 Timothy 2, Paul writes, I desire then that in every place the men should pray, lifting holy hands without anger or quarreling. God has not only commanded us to pray, he has also promised to hear our prayers. Jesus said in Matthew 21, and whatever you ask in prayer, you will receive if you have faith. And again in John 16, Jesus said, until now you have asked nothing in my name, Ask, and you will receive, that your joy may be full. And St. James writes in chapter 1, verse 5, If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives generously to all without reproach, and it will be given him. So we have the command to God, of God to pray, and his promise that he will hear and answer us. Think of that. The creator of the universe has commanded you to talk to him. More than that, he has promised that he is listening and will hear and answer your prayers. We can approach him with confidence, confessing our sins, asking him for what we need, thanking him for his gifts, even bringing him our complaints, just as dear children can talk to their dear father here on earth. Yet we so often ignore God's command and disregard God's promise. We just don't pray. Why not? Perhaps it's because we don't take this gift of God as seriously as we should. Martin Luther once wrote, but where there is to be a true prayer, there must be seriousness. People must feel their distress, and such distress presses them and compels them to call and cry out. Then prayer will be made willingly as it ought to be. People will need no teaching about how to prepare for it and to reach the proper devotion. I think we feel our distresses easily enough. The pains and sufferings of this life are all around us. But I think the world has trained us to make prayer our last resort instead of the first response to the events of our lives, whether they be good or bad. What if we were to reorder our lives just a bit? Let me put it this way. When something good happens to you, who is the first person you contact? Do you tell your husband or wife, tell your kids or a friend, post it on social media? Why not tell God first? Yes, he already knows, but did you remember to say thank you to him? And when something goes wrong in your life, who hears about it first? Again, before you go to anyone else, why not talk to God? Ask for help for yourself or for someone else. You don't have to tell him how you think he's supposed to answer your request. Just bring him the problem. Even if you're filing a complaint, talk to him. You're his child and he wants to hear from you. Still, it can be hard for us to pray according to the command and promise of God. Perhaps that's because we just don't live in a habit of prayer. When Jesus spoke about practicing your righteousness before other people, he talked about fasting, praying, and giving alms. It wasn't a matter of if his followers were to do such things, but when. He assumed these would be regular habits in the lives of his people. So Jesus said, when you pray, when you pray, go to, into your room and shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret and your father who sees in secret will reward you. Our prayers are not intended for public display. You don't have to drop to your knees and show off how pious and holy you think you are. Most of the time, 
unless you're joining with fellow believers, these are private conversations with God. Now, personally, I'm a big fan of praying out loud whenever I can. That makes me put real words to my prayers, not just vague thoughts or emotions. I articulate what I'm saying to God so I know what, so I know what I said. That's for my sake, not his. It also means I need a private space to do that. A place either to go outside or to shut the door and be alone. That said, our prayers don't have to be polished pieces of prose. Plain, simple words spoken from the heart, whether in the privacy of a closed room or the privacy of our own minds, spoken to our Father. That is how we should pray. Yes, we can use the resources of prayers written by others. Prayers recorded in the Bible, the hymnal, and in prayer books and other devotional writings can often help us find ways to express the things on our minds that we would like to bring before God. And when we cannot find the words, we have God's promise through the Apostle Paul in Romans 8, verse 26. Likewise, the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. For we do not know what to pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. So form the habit of speaking to God, and God himself will help you find the words you need to fill in the blanks. Indeed, that was what Jesus himself did when his disciples came to him and said, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. Jesus gave them words, not simply words to repeat, but words to serve as a pattern, an example, a blueprint a guide for their prayers and ours. As we turn to him this Lent and ask, Lord, teach us to pray, we will explore that model prayer he gave them, the Lord's Prayer. We'll also consider other examples of prayers during this holy season so that we learn not only a text, but learn to pray in this way as our Savior has taught us and continues to teach us to pray. In the name of Jesus, amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let my prayer rise before you as incense, and the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. For behold, from this day all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things to me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has exalted the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent empty away. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham and to his seed forever. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father.
Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come to you. Almighty and everlasting God, you despise nothing you have made, and forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create in us new and contrite hearts, that lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, we may receive from you full pardon and forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, from whom come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works, give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. The Lord 